it's time for a level one diagnostic. Things are getting more claustrophobic here. I've got to, I've got to clean and that means purge. And when I purge, that's really when I get to the backlog of things that have been hanging around for a long time that I really probably should have fixed sooner. So that is what has brought us today's level one diagnostic because if I don't fix it, it's going in the dumpster. And uh, whew, these are dead. It's dead, Jim. All right, so these are pretty cool, you know, things to use as inexpensive edge routers. And I say inexpensive, uh, these were around $1,000 when they were new in 2017, 2018. This is an Intel Atom processor, two or four cores, typically four cores for the configurations that I work on. It has eight gigabytes of uh, dual channel error correcting memory. It's got four onboard NICs and a regular PCI Express by eight slot, so you could have another four. You could run, you know, a mirrored configuration for your, uh, operating system. These make pretty awesome edge storage devices for caching and things like that because you've got a lot of SATA connections, you can put a lot of drives in here, uh, or edge routers or security appliances or anything custom like that. You just need a, a, a quick, reliable Linux box. This is the model 505-2 from Supermicro. And uh, the motherboard is an A1SRI-2758F. Intel has screwed us all with the Intel Atom. There's a there's an errata. You can get it fixed under warranty. It's a pain in the ass. And a lot of these are actually going out of warranty. So you can pick these up at surplus for basically nothing. Now you can still buy these new for like $500, but I'm not advocating that. The newer, more replacement gear is uh, much, much better. Uh, but you can get these for on the order of $50 to $100 in the used surplus market, especially DOA ones or dead ones. Sometimes you get lucky and you find a dead one on eBay, although, people on eBay, I don't necessarily recommend that. Uh, but depending on what's available in your area, surplus, that kind of thing, if you see these and it's dead, don't think you got screwed, the fix is actually pretty easy. Although you give up some things. Let me explain. There's a problem with these Atom chips um, where the LPC, uh, the chip sort of wears over time and you need to pull the LPC pin to 3.3 volts or the system won't boot because that's how it boots. The IPMI, the onboard management interface, uses the LPC interface to communicate with the operating system. There's a fix, but the fix will render it impossible for the IPMI to talk to the onboard operating system. You can still use the IPMI, you can still remote into it, you can turn it on and off remotely through the, the out of band management. The cool stuff you can do from the command line, like reset the user accounts and that kind of thing from Linux, that's not going to work anymore. Um, and the fix is to basically solder a 200 ohm resistor uh, between pin one and pin nine on the TPM header, because the TPM header actually has that LPC breakout. The, the pin to the CPU does break out. That's the most convenient way to get at it on this motherboard. Now I had one of these die in the field in like 2019, and it was an away mission. So it was super frustrating because I got it all configured and everything was good, and it was a reconfiguration. And a lot of the time, these things are fine until you reboot them. It's like, okay, I got the reconfiguration. It's acting weird. Let's reboot it, and now it's dead. And it's like, okay, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning because that's how it goes on these things. I don't want to deal with this. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. And then it was like, oh, yeah, the atoms have that problem. Right. And I think I found a post on the EEV blog that was something like, oh, you just put a 100 ohm resistor. And there wasn't a guide for the super micro motherboard, but there was a guide for, I think a Synology NAS or something else that was based on the Atom um, C20. And so I was able to sort of work that out on the underside of the motherboard. But more recently I tweeted and it was like, hey, does anybody else have this problem? You know, who wants to do this? And 0x47DF on Twitter, which is a sleepy duck pond appreciator, at least that's what their, their name is right now. Thank you very much. They responded and said, hey, here's a picture of what I did. They installed a 100 ohm, 100 to 110 ohm resistor as well. Now 100 ohms is not a lot of resistance. That works out to about 40 milliamps through the CPU. That's maybe not the best. Um, so I experimented with these. These three are dead, all three of them. And 600 ohms worked on two of them, but not the third. Uh, and the third one worked with a 200 ohm resistor. So that's red, red, brown. <laughs> these are cheap, loose tolerance. Uh, I'm using a through hole instead of a surface mount because I can show you a quick, easy thing to do. You can get this one, one wide pin header. 
and it's gonna be five pins big basically and it goes on the side opposite the notch toward the notch side. What does that mean? Well let me explain with pictures. And that's pretty much it for this level one diagnostic is basically you're going to use a resistor on the TPM header. If you use too small of a resistance value, it's harder on the hardware than it needs to be and it may shorten its lifetime. If you use too big of a resistor, uh, it may work for a little while and then flake out. Honestly, if you do this fix, I would not use these in production, but they make great home lab machines and, and that kind of thing. The one that I bodged in the field, I sort of forgot about because it was, you know, like three o'clock in the morning and I was like, oh, thank goodness I could sleep. And it ran continuously until it was finally replaced, I think in like late 2020. So the resistor fix may be pretty good in terms of, you know, lasting a long time. It just interferes with the communication between the host system and, and the out of band management. Just be aware of that. But otherwise everything actually works and I don't really see that as, as a huge deal because you can still use the out of band management to turn it on and off. I mean, it's fine. Quick video, quick fix you're searching for that kind of thing for this particular super micro chassis well i'm three for three i'm wendell this is level one i'm signing out you can find me in the level one forums thanks eev blog and also random person on twitter